Hello guys, um, welcome to the Junior Jeff. Uh, I think this time we're doing a special edition uh, with Kirk and Corey. So uh, we are partnership with the Voynich and they are like uh, giving a speaker this time. So I know um, we've been away like a while for Junior Jeff. We haven't uh, been away for quite quite some time now. So I think we are coming you guys. So I'm going to just talk slowly and be a repetitive now so that people start to can start joining and stuff like that. So and I'm going to remove the screen as well so you guys can uh, see my face that been so long you guys probably didn't see it anyway <laughs> uh so yeah okay just gonna give a couple more seconds right and then i'm gonna give the intro so i hope you guys are doing well uh i think the COVID situation is currently is improving uh, in Asia, especially in kl uh i think kl is actually but it's getting worse outside of kl so if you're not vaccinated yet please get yourself vaccinated and uh please stay safe and uh, try to reduce your socialization. I mean, not don't try to socialize. We I mean, try to improve more your socialization, but try to reduce this, your um, distance. I mean, try to uh, increase your distance when you talk to your friends and hanging out. All that, right? Keep your SOPs all that uh, well. Uh, okay, I think. Okay, I think I'm be already pretty much done with crapping. So straight to the point now. Let's get started, and I'll bring after that. I'll bring uh bring the speaker in. So he can introduce himself and he will give a, a hand out over to him all right so let's bring the slide in so if so here's our slide so welcome to junior Delft Malaysia. so if you haven't followed on the meetup page yet go ahead follow search for junior developers uh, malaysia you know for uh, malaysia's malaysia there so there's a couple of things there in comments you can just ask question or you can reach out to me as well so we always look out our speakers or look out for any anything that you guys want to like uh, collaborate or what uh, or you want to volunteer yourself or you have any questions you're probably looking for mentorship and stuff like that just reach out to us and uh, we will happy to help you guys out right so if you're on facebook uh you can go and search for junior deaf and uh you can just join the group uh request for it to join a group and uh, I will just approve it, we will just approve it. And you can see some of the events and some of the posting there, people are looking for jobs and stuff like that. It's out there. So if you're, and, uh, if you're looking to getting hired, if you're looking for any places, just reach out to us or just see the, the group if anyone posted anything new stuff about it, all right? Uh, okay, let's get start with the junior Jeff. Uh, was long, uh, after a long break. <laughs> and having said that, so how it's going to be tonight, I'm going to uh, give an intro of the junior Jeff. And then we have a Corey. A Corey is coming from a, a US and it's like all the very different time zone itself. So he will give a talk. And after that, we have a QA. Uh, and uh, I think you probably this is uh, actually recorded as well. So I think if you guys have any questions, you can drop in the comments. Uh, if it's, and then I probably like just try to collect the comments and try to send to them. See if you will need to be answered. Or you can just reach out to me through the private message and I'll try to get the answers for you if you need any uh, further questions on that. All right. And introduction to Junior Deaf. I've already repeated this many times, uh, but she has to to say another uh, one more time. I mean, uh, uh, as usual, well, like any new people who joining us as well. If you haven't joined, just please free to join us the group. Uh, so it's, this group is mainly for the we set it up mainly for the junior developers in Malaysia, right? So you notice that junior developers in Malaysia are struggling, and usually after one or two years, uh, they're pretty much lost and they just drop off. They don't know where to go and what's next for them so they just entirely disappear from the of uh, the tech side and software developer and they just move to another field and because there's no proper guidance and don't know what they they're pretty much lost and probably like what's going to happen is they join an agency or what they're just going to give you a lot of work and just stuck there like a and just just code and code after that but you don't know uh what's more than that there's more more towards coding than that right so and that's the main mission of uh of the junior job itself so basically how it started was in uh, basically started by a couple of people in Austria uh, and Sydney and uh, Melbourne and stuff and then went on to uh, another chapter in New Zealand and from New Zealand after that after a while it started in uh, Singapore as well Singapore had it for some time by Michael Chang and uh, from there I started in Malaysia so we have it in Malaysia now and uh, I think uh, what happened is due to the we had a lot of times uh, so we want to do mentorship and we want to do workshop everything but right when you want to initiate uh, everything, it's just uh, die off because of the uh, COVID and we can't do any physical, so we just like taking a break. And but now we start to come back again doing online stuff and slowly coming back, uh, try to see how we can help you guys out, right? So, 
And uh, one of the things about uh, uh, Junior Jaff is also like uh, how diversity we prioritize on diversity. So it will always require like you have a male speaker, probably next time you need to have a female speaker and all that, right? So, if, and if you need help with a junior, don't feel afraid, uh, feel to chat to us. We will have, try to help you as much as possible, right? <clears throat> Any concerns, anything that you may have, we have happy to answer. There's a lot of senior people here uh, in the group as well, like who are willing to help you guys and guide you as well. Some of them are CTOs, some of them are CEOs of tech big uh, companies as well. And uh, they have a lot of experience, so don't feel afraid. Uh, or you just feel free to a private message as well, right? So you guys know how to reach out to me anyway. So, yep, so let's move on. Uh, so, to sure housekeeping, uh, you can go check out the engineers.ny and then straight away you can join the Slack group. Uh, the Slack group, you can find everyone there. Uh, most of the people are there active, quite active there. If there's a, even a support channel, if you have any question on the coding where you start, you don't know how to solve it or what, or you need of technical advice or life advice or uh, also sort of like advisors or any guidance you require, you can just post it there. Uh, someone will help to reply your questions or I even I will sometimes reply there as well. So we do usually hang out in the area. And uh, if you look out for any other meetups happening, you can reach out to uh, Dev Kami slash meetups. That's another uh, where you can see all the meetups happening in Malaysia as well. So uh, I think currently we don't have much, but uh, I think probably going to spike up soon uh, in a couple of coming uh, months as things start to improve in KL. Uh, so hopefully we will see more stuff, right? And again, if you haven't joined the Facebook group, go join the Junior Dev Malaysia and then the meetup.com group as well, Junior Dev Malaysia group as well. So I think uh, all this will be consolidated actually, to be honest. Uh, so we go to be trying to like uh, consolidate all this in one place and have a, like a job listing and a, and a the newsletter, all that coming soon later. So uh, I think we try to do this with the collaboration of a couple of other uh, meetups uh, as well in Malaysia. So I keep you posted. This is the first time you're hearing from me. Uh, so uh, once that's everything's up and running, we keep you posted, and things will look more organized for your for your side as well. And I will side. And as usual, I need to tell you about the code of conduct. Be nice to everyone. Everyone's welcome. Uh, let every, I mean everyone's welcome to join the conversation, but don't try to bully or some say something that hurtful or which or you think that it can cause problem. Too much don't say it. But if you think it's a valid point, it's a good thing, just say it out. So, and yeah. And we don't welcome any bullies as well. We pretty much going to blacklist you if you're a bully or, bully or what. And yeah, so that's pretty much of it. So I'm going to introduce the speaker. Uh, so we have Corey. So you're going to talk about API. Uh, so I'm going to hand over to him in a while. And uh, Corey is, is basically is an auto programmer and a speaker as well. So uh, if you haven't uh, checked out his book yet, go and check out the self-taught programmer uh, book. I think it's already been uh, interpreted in seven languages, uh, right? And uh, probably, I don't think it's available in Malay though. So uh, if, you're, if you're looking for Malay one, um, uh, you can ask me later. Uh, you can ask him later. You can think, find it for him and ask, for, ask about it, right? Uh, so, and other than that, he's also like a, a developer advocate with Warnage and he's living in the Bay Area uh, with a wife and a, and a daughter, right? So, uh, but again, because I live in the Bay Area, that's why we actually another reason, right? Uh, we try to do this recorded because to get a time, uh, time where it's live, both sides is very hard, difficult, especially if you want to do it in the middle of the night, right? For both sides. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I think pretty much I'm done with the, done with the intros. So, I'm going to bring the speaker in. Um, so, hello, Corey. How are hey. You? Thank you Good. so much for having me. Yep, no worries. Good to have you. Thank you so much. Uh, waking up so early on your side and uh, doing this for us, and uh, pretty sure this would be very helpful for the for the audience. And uh, looking forward uh, what you have to share. So, and uh, I will join you back after your after your talk uh, for the Q and A. Uh, for now, uh, the floor is all yours, man. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. Okay, great. All right. Thanks. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen so that I can get my presentation started. Okay, can you see my screen? Uh, hopefully, hopefully it is working. So, yeah, all good. I'm just good. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Okay, because sometimes <laughs> I do a presentation and you can't see. So, okay, awesome. 
Welcome to an intro to APIs with Python. Thank you all so much for coming. What you're going to learn today, what an API is, and how to use an API to build a web app with video streaming. So first, I want to tell you a little bit about my background. So in college, I tried to learn a program, but failed. And when I struggled, when I graduated, with a major in political science, I struggled to get a job. I just felt like I didn't have the skills that employers were looking for. So unable to find a job, I decided to try to learn to program. And I bought all the books and courses. If you look to the right, that's Think Python. That is the first book that I ever bought to try to learn programming. And that's actually a great book. I really recommend it. Six months later, I got my first interview at a startup. And unfortunately, I just completely bombed the interview. I didn't do very well, so I had to go back to the drawing board and practice more. But eventually, I did end up as a software engineer at eBay, which was an amazing experience. I really enjoyed my time there. And I wanted to mention that learning to code also allowed me to travel. So I did a bunch of traveling, and I actually had the opportunity to visit Malaysia. So I went to Kuala Lumpur, if that's how you say it. Sorry if I miss pronouncing it, but I got the chance to go there and it was really cool. I saw the Patronus Towers and got to eat really, really good food over there and had a great time. So I've actually been to Malaysia and I'm actually speaking at PyCon Malaysia later this week, which I'm really excited about as well. And hopefully in the future, I'll get the opportunity to actually travel to Malaysia again, maybe to speak at PyCon Malaysia in the future in person, but I would love to go back because I had a really good time. So after working at several companies in Silicon Valley, I decided to write a book about my experience and I called it the self-taught programmer, the definitive guide to programming professionally. To my disbelief, it's now sold more than 150,000 copies around the world. And I also have a Udemy course of the same name that has 160,000 students. Four years ago, I created the Self-Taught Programmers Facebook group for anyone learning how to code outside of school, not wanted to get together and create a community. And the main thing that brings everyone together is that the people in the community don't have a computer science degree. So they might be learning from a programming bootcamp or from my book or any other number of ways, but that's what brings everyone together. Today, we have over 60,000 members and it's free to join if you want to check it out. Here are some success stories. We have Victor who talked about how he went in one year from not knowing how to code to interning at a major tech company with Python. And another member who posted about getting a full-time job. So this happens all the time and it's really cool seeing these success stories. So what am I doing now? Well, my new book, The Self-Taught Computer Scientist is coming out in October. Super excited about that. So it's coming out October 12th, I believe. So it's been a long time in the making, but it is coming out soon and I'm super excited. And I'm also working as a developer advocate at Vonage, which is really cool. I've been there for about seven months and I've really enjoyed my time. It is really cool because I'm on a community team. I get to build community among developers and help spread awareness about our different APIs, which we're going to be talking a lot about today. If you're not familiar with Vonage, we're an award-winning cloud communications provider, and we have a bunch of different APIs that help developers easily do things like send text messages, make phone calls, and more. So how can coding side projects help your career? This is something I just wanted to dive into really quickly because you can often use APIs to make really, really cool coding side projects. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about how that's helped me. So Throughout my career, I've always done different side projects. I created this one project that tried to figure out where the best place in the country to buy an Airbnb was. In other words, where could you get a really low mortgage 
And I used data from Zillow to figure that out. And then with that low mortgage, rent out your Airbnb for the highest price. And that really helped me get my job at eBay. So I put together a list of different coding APIs. If you type in fun APIs into Google, it should be the first result. It's on Vonage. That's been actually my most popular article that I've written. And so you can see like 30 different APIs that are really fun for, for different side projects. But I definitely recommend doing that using different APIs. And if you don't know what an API is, I'm going to get into that. But I just wanted to say, since this is the junior devs group, that I definitely recommend doing as many side projects as you can, because it's a really good way to build experience and to get hired or to get promoted. So what is an API? I've been talking a lot about that and I haven't defined it yet. So an API stands for application programming interface, and it allows two programs to communicate. So here is an example that will help clarify what that means. So if you type in this link into your browser, but you replace name equals Corey with your name, you can use this API that's really cool that guesses your age. So HTTPS colon slash API dot ageify dot IO slash, and then a question mark name equals your name, just exactly how it is on the screen, but replace Corey, that's my name with your name. And when you do that, it should show your age or a guess of what your age is. So it has your name, what it thinks your age is, and how many people have queried that name. So maybe it got your age right, maybe not. It's pretty cool though. It, it uses some machine learning or something. I, I actually don't really know how it works, but um, I've used this in the past in workshops and it's done a pretty good job of guessing people's age. So that's the basic idea, right? This is the API. It gives you information. You pass in a query and it gives you back some information. And that's what an API is. It allows your browser to communicate with their, uh, their API and to exchange information. So today we're going to build a video streaming website that looks something like this. So basically they'll, you'll be able to log in as an admin and stream, and then other people will be able to join your stream in another tab or browser. And then you can chat as well. So that's what we're going to build using Vonage's API. So some use cases for this, you could create a custom teaching solution for a classroom. Basically, you could create your own website that has video chat and video streaming, and you could even customize it so that you press a button and a graph pops up. So you could do a lot of different cool stuff with teaching or make a custom customer experience solution. There's a million different things you could do with it. It wouldn't be good for something like cloning Twitch. You wouldn't want to have like 10,000 people consuming the video. This is meant for like custom experiences between like zero to 30 or so people. So you don't want to have a huge amount of viewers. That's not what this is meant for, but it's really meant for just custom experiences on a website. A few things before we get started, you need to have Python installed to follow along. If you don't, it's better to just watch what I'm doing rather than try to install Python really quickly right now, but it's fine to follow along you or just watch instead of actually typing everything in. That's fine too. Totally works. Python library is code you can import into your software. So that's what a Python library is. Pip is a Python tool for downloading libraries. And the command line is a user interface that as you communicate with your operating system. So I'm going to be pulling up my command line and typing different things into it. A web development framework is a piece of software for building websites and environmental variables are variables stored outside of your program. For instance, on your computer, often used for sensitive information like API keys. So, all right, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you need to do, we have some initial setup. So you're going to want to create a TalkBox account. So Vonage purchased TalkBox. And so that is what we use for our video API. If you go to talkbox.com slash account slash user slash sign up, you can create an account. So again, that's talkbox.com 
slash account slash user slash sign up. You're going to want to go there if you're going to follow along with this workshop. So I will give everyone just a little bit of time to get that done. Okay, once you go to that link, it should say sign up for a video API free trial at the top. So when you sign up, you get $10 in free credits. So enter your name, your email, your company name, and your password. Then you can agree to the terms of service. And then you can redeem your free $10 credit. So you don't have to enter a credit card or anything like that. Okay, so then you're going to create a talk box project. So once you sign up, you should see something that looks like this. In the top left, hit projects, and then hit create new project. Okay, then you should see, select your project type and select create custom project. Then put a project name. You can use my underscore project, but it doesn't matter. You can put whatever project name you would like. Then hit view project. Okay. So once you've done that, you should be on a page that looks like this, where it says project API key and project secret. So make sure to leave this page up because you're going to, you're going to need that API key and the project secret to follow along. So I will give everyone just a little bit more time to make sure that they've set up their Talkbox project. Okay, let's take a look at our app. So you're going to want to go to github.com slash cAltoff, C-A-L-T-H-O-F-F -F slash Vonage Unlocked. You can see it up at the top of my browser. And this is the repository for the app that we're going to build. These are all of the instructions. So I'm going to go over a few instructions, but if you get lost, you can always go to this page and see the instructions for yourself and see what you missed. If you want to star the project, feel free to do that. That'd be awesome. And I would appreciate it. So click code and then copy and paste this link. If you just hit this, it will automatically copy it. And then you can bring up your terminal. I'm going to make this bigger. And then type git clone. and paste in that link. You want to make sure that you are in the directory that you want to clone it though. So in this case, I'm going to CD to desktop so that you can see it. And then I'm going to get clone. You can see that 
created this folder, which has our app and our requirements and everything in our project. Okay, so just a little bit of setup. And you again, you can follow along on GitHub. Here are the instructions. So we need to create a virtual environment. If you're not familiar with virtual environments, it's sort of outside the scope of this presentation, but you can look it up later. You don't really have to understand them very well. It's just good practice to use a virtual environment in Python. So, and type virtual env, then that creates a new virtual environment. Oops, sorry, I made a mistake. Do not do that. CD into Vonage Unlocked first. And if you already did that, it doesn't matter. But CD into Vonage Unlocked and then do that. So virtual, just to make it cleaner. Okay, so if you type ls, you can then see that this is our project with all our files and we just created a new virtual environment called venv. Now we are going to source venv slash bin slash activate, which activates our virtual environment. And then we can install all of our dependencies into that virtual environment. As you can see here, that means that our virtual environment is activated. Basically, the 10 second summary of virtual environments is you don't want to download all your Python dependencies into your main Python interpreter. Instead, you create a virtual environment for each project so that your dependencies are isolated from each other. So now we can pip3 install hyphen r requirements dot text. That's going to install all our project dependencies. Now if we do pip3 freeze shows that we have successfully downloaded all of our requirements. Okay, so just to recap, you had to type pip3 install virtual env, then virtual env then source then slash bin slash activate and then pip3 install dash r requirements dot text and that installs all the requirements we've already created a free open talk account and we got our api key and secret so make sure you have that handy okay so then there's just one final piece of setup that we need to do we need to use Vim or whatever your favorite text editor is to create a file called .env inside of our directory. So you can do ls to make sure that you are inside of the Vonage Unlocked directory. And then vim.env, that creates a new file. Hit i so that you can type. And then you need to put your OpenTalk API and your OpenTalk secret into the places that say OpenTalk API key and OpenTalk API secret. So completely remove that and paste your OpenTalk secret right there. And then remove this. and paste your open talk API key there. So again, we created that earlier on opentalk.com. And so you should have that information. And so just go ahead and copy and paste both those things there. I'm gonna give everyone a little bit of time to make sure that they've gotten that done.
Okay, once you've copied and pasted that, you can hit escape colon X. That will save your file. Now just verify that you actually have that file. So it's a hidden file. So you can do ls a and you should see that file right there. And then you can cat dot env make sure that you have that. I didn't put the API key in secret. I'm actually gonna use PyCharm when I do my live demo. And so I already have that all set up. So the reason I'm doing that is because PyCharm does autocomplete, which is gonna make it a lot easier for me. But if you're following along, feel free to use idle, which is Python's built in ID. And now if you type Python three app.py, it should work for you. I didn't put my API key in secret, so it shouldn't work, but I'm going to open up PyCharm. And if I run this, so this is what should happen to you when you run your code from the command line. And I can then go to my local server slash admin. What is your name? Corey. I go to slash join. I can join as a consumer of this video. And as you can see, that is the live streaming app that we're building. So I am going to start with a blank Python file and I'm gonna do some live coding to show you how this works. So first, I just wanna give you a very, very basic intro to Flask in case you have never used it before. So Flask is a really cool web development framework for Python. I love it and it's really easy to use. So. First, first thing I'm gonna do is import Flask. And just pass in a few things for setup. Now I can define a function, I'm gonna call it index and I'm going to return hello world. And then at the top, all I have to do to link this view. So this is a view. It's going to return hello world. And I want to link it to a URL. So I can say app.route and then pass in the home page for this website. So this essentially links this function to this URL. And now I can say app.run and I'm going to say app.debug equals true. That puts it in debug mode. So it helps us out if we're having problems. Now, when I run this, I have to kill my other app. When I run this, Hello world. So we made a website on 127.0.0.1 colon 5,000, our local server. And it says, hello world. And we did it with only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like eight lines of code, which is why Flask is so cool. So definitely recommend checking it out and reading their documentation and stuff. If you haven't already, cause it's, uh, because it's a really cool library. Moving on. We copy this and paste it 
we can create a new URL and map that to a different view. So if I say slash join, then we can return join. For example, call this join. Change this to admin, 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 save. And now, hello world, when we go to the homepage, slash admin, says admin, slash join, says join. So that is how Flask works. All right. Next thing that we're going to do from decouple, import config, we're going to go ahead and grab those environmental variables that we have stored in .env. So we will say open talk API gets config and we called that open talk API. And then we're going to say open talk secret. So oh, this just grabs the API key and secret from your .env file. And we're going to use that later. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is, oh, actually, you know what? I think it's from config. No, that's right. Let me see if this works. Yeah, that seemed to work. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is from open talk import. This is the open talk API, not API, API <laughs> SDK for Python that allows us to use Vonage's awesome video API so that we can do all our Vonage video magic very easily. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to say, client gets client and then we're going to pass in our open talk api share secret and then Our API. So we're going to pass in our open talk secret and our open talk API. Okay. And then the next thing we're going to do is create a session. So the way it works, the way the video API works is essentially you create a session and every session has a unique ID and then publishers can publish video to the session and subscribers can consume video from the session. So we're going to create a session and we're going to get its ID. So we're going to say session ID gets client dot create session dot session ID. So this uses the open talk API to create a session, and then we're just grabbing that session ID. Okay, cool. So if you look at static inside Vonage Unlocked, and you'll see that there's JavaScript files that we're going to use later, CSS. Uh, if you look inside templates, go to admin.html. So if we go to our actual app, let me pop, go to the actual app. So this page 
is produced by admin.html. So it's just barely any HTML, just some CSS. And it says, welcome, what is your name? And then it sends a post request that has your name and some data in it. So what we're going to do next is we're going to allow our index page to accept post, both post and get requests. And then from Flask, we are going to also import requests or request and render template. The render template allows us to serve HTML with Flask. So when we go to join, instead of the string join, we're going to use render template and we have join.html and we have admin.html in the templates folder. And so when you go to join, we're going to tell Flask to serve join.html. And when you go to slash admin, we're going to tell Flask to serve admin.html. And join is very similar to admin, but it's just slightly different. Like it doesn't say welcome admin, it just says welcome or something. Okay, so now when we make that change, let me make sure that I'm actually running the right thing. Okay, I was running the working version. So if I go to live coding. Looks like it says invalid credentials. So let's see what I did wrong here. Oh, you know what I did wrong. When you create your client, you need to pass in your API key first and then your secret. So sorry about that. So right here, when you create your client, I am switching chairs because that chair is really squeaky that I've been using and it's bugging me. Okay. So pass in your API, pass in your secret, and now this should work. Okay, so if you go to slash admin, now you should see a nice page there and slash join a slightly different page. Okay, so now we're gonna do some quick work on our index function. And I'm gonna give everyone just 10 seconds to catch up. If you're working on anything, trying to get this working, take a very quick break. Okay, so. As I mentioned earlier, when you use the OpenTalk API, you create a session that has a session ID and every session has a unique ID. So you could have a website that has 10 different sessions going on, all with different people consuming and publishing video, right? And those are all mapped to 10 different unique session IDs. But inside of a session, every person that joins a session has to have a unique token. So we're gonna go ahead and generate a token by saying token gets client.generate token and then passing in session ID that we created right here. So that creates a new token for everyone that goes here. Now we're going to say if request dot method is post then we are going to 
render template. And then we have a third template here called index.html that you can check out if you're curious. But we're actually passing some variables into that. So we need to make sure that we get all of the information that we need. And then here we're going to say, please log in if it's not a post request. Of course, it's not the most secure, best way to do it, but this is just for illustrative purposes. Okay, so if request.method is post, first thing we are going to do is check to see if they're admin. So if admin in, again, you don't actually want to do this. Uh, it's not the best way to check if someone is admin, not very secure, but this is just to show you how this works. So if, if admin in request.form, then we'll say admin is true. And then we will say name gets request dot form name. So we're just grabbing the name from the HTML form. So if you go to admin.html, you'll see that input is linked to name. And so we're just grabbing that right here. And if you look at index.html, so we have these one, two, three, four, five variables that we're using in this HTML to make our code work. So API key, session ID, token, name, and is admin. So we need to pass those in. So API key gets open talk API. Session ID gets session ID. Token gets the token that we created right here. Admin is admin. Is admin gets admin and name. I believe it's last one. Yeah, no. name gets name. Okay, let's see if this works. Okay, so it looks like that worked. Your app should now be working. And that's all there is to it on the Python end. Just a little bit of code and you can get your own video streaming app working, which is pretty cool. Customize it however you want. And if you wanna take a look at the templates, this is index.html, and again, you have join.html, admin.html, then app.py has all of the Python code. And then if you go to static, you've got admin video.js and viewer video.js, so you can check those out. I don't have time to go into all the JavaScript. It's not a lot, but I'll quickly show you how the viewer underscore video dot js works so super simple we just grab the session id the api key and the token from our python server and then we initial initialize a session so we call this is um the open talk javascript sdk which we bring in in index dot html if you look right here we're bringing in the it's open talk JavaScript SDK. So we call ot.init session. 
which uses our API key and session ID to create a new session on uh, a session object. So we've already created this session on our Python side, but this basically creates a session object on the JavaScript side. And then this code subscribes to the, so this is for a slash join and this line of code or a couple lines of code actually subscribes to a stream. And then we just connect and pass in, we call session dot connect and pass in the token that we got from our Python. And that's all that we need to actually subscribe to a stream. Cool. So I hope that this was helpful and that you were able to follow along. And that is how you can very quickly and easily build a streaming app with Python. So if you want to follow me on Twitter, I am happy to answer any questions at Corey Altoff is my username. And so just send me a message. If you followed along, if you have any questions, happy to help, but I hope that you learned something and let me know if you build any side projects, if you check out my article, once again, by just typing in fun APIs, it's the first thing that pops up on Vonage. Let me know if you use that list to create any cool side projects. But thank you so much for coming to this. This has been really, really fun. And again, just let me know if you have any questions. And now we can go ahead and do the Q&A. Oh, boy. Awesome. Hello? I think Thanks. it was on mute. <laughs> oh, no, no. I think it was because my, my screen was being shared, so it wasn't working yeah. out. Cool. All right, cool. Uh, so what I think is that uh, I think it's a very good uh, talk and the workshops. I think it's, uh, people, I hope people have benefited from it. And uh, hopefully uh, they can, the good thing about rec being recorded is that people can actually pause the video and they can actually uh, go through it and, uh, and, and go through it in your own pace and when you want. And if any questions, they can ask you directly. and. They can actually, uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably like set up a link. If you have any questions, you can just drop in the, drop in their questions. And uh, I'm just going to like uh, compile the questions that they have and just throw it to you. Probably if you're happy to answer it, uh, just re re refine. Uh, yeah, and mainly that's about it, I think. And uh, just have a couple of questions for you uh, for the Q&A, right? Uh, other than Python, right? Like what else we can use this API for and like, uh, what I mean, what I not I mean by what else? Like, what other languages does this API can be used and supported? Um, hold on one second. I'm gonna rejoin because my video is completely frozen. So give me okay, one. cool. Yeah, sure, sure. All right, guys. I think uh, he's having a issue with the video a bit, so you will rejoin. So meanwhile, uh, I think it's pretty much. I think it's very uh, straightforward for you guys, and uh, I think hopefully uh, you guys benefited from it. I think it's very, I mean, it's a beginner stage and if you can just get started with the API and how you want to implement it straightforward with your Python code, uh, it's quite a very interesting uh, project you can work on. So especially uh, if you're both, if you just want to get started, you never, or, or you, perhaps you never coded before and just want to get started as well, right? You can just take from the GitHub and just get out a code, compile it and straight away get up and running and uh, using the API from the uh, Voyage and you can get started and see how well it works. Uh, works or not, and you can build your own side projects, right? I think that's the benefit. That's the benefit of using a benefit of uh, using a uh, APIs from like Onage or any other uh, other APIs or third party providers, right? You can straight away plug and play, and uh, and you can use it anytime. Yep. Yeah, yeah. We'll come back. Uh, Curry. Right, okay. Looks like that. Fix it. Yeah. So we've got oh. we've got Python, mm -hmm. JavaScript, PHP, I believe, Java, and I'll have to look up the full list of, of yep. languages that we have, but we have we have a bunch of different SDKs, yeah. Okay. So I, I think this is pretty much uh, I think if you go to the go to the AP, I mean the link itself, they can yeah. check it out or uh, what I think Ruby and, uh, too. I think Ruby too. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay. I think this pretty much cover I mean, most of the main uh, languages already, right? Uh, I think the next question would be like uh, for people like just want to get started or start projects, right? Like very little programming language. I think it's usually when they were started, they got stuck and then they don't know how to uh, get move to the next step. So how does they move from one step when they get stuck? 
uh, from a simple step and move to the next step, right? When they get stuck, what should they do? Like, uh, what we suggest to do, like maybe from your experience as well. When someone gets stuck? Yep. So let's say I have a project that I'm interested in. Uh, perhaps I want to build a simple uh, Twitter app or simple news feed. And then suddenly I got stuck. Uh, well, I probably like uh, stuck at uh, uh, viewing all the news feed uh, appearing on my uh, website or something, right? And uh, but so I just pretty much what happened is usually when it started, you people get demotivated and like, oh, I don't have any motivation and uh, I don't know where to look for uh, answers. I already Google everything. I already tried everything. And then you just get up and you just pretty much slam your laptop and move away. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, if you, for, I think uh, you have a couple of head projects and I'm pretty sure you experienced a couple of this uh, in the beginning itself, right? So what you did, probably you can couple of uh, share some of your stuff. Yeah. yeah, that's that's a really good question. And that's definitely happened to me. And I think that happens to, to every developer. Yeah. I think that's why communities are so important. Like whether it's the the junior developer Malaysia community or self-taught programmers, or if you're joined Stack Overflow or whatever it is, I think that's why it's super important to be a part of a community. And when you get stuck to, to have a supportive community to, to ask questions to. And that's why it's good to participate in a community as much as possible so that you're not just only ever asking for help, but then, you know, help other people when you can, if they post something and, and you can help then post them that way you don't feel like, oh, I'm only ever asking for stuff, but, or, you know, when you become more experienced, then you can mm. give back. But I think that's why these programming communities are such a game changer because it allows you to, to get that help. You know, I think that it's really important to make sure to ask for help when you get stuck instead of just like, you know, I've definitely had times where I've spent like an hour, not an hour, like a whole day, like two days trying to figure something out. And if I just asked for help, I could have gotten it done so much quicker and not been so frustrated. So I think that's really important. Yeah, I think I think he pretty much say uh, very, very well. I'll answer you, right? Uh, so yeah, you guys maybe should ask for help, but ask for the right help and uh, try to get moving. Don't You can take a break, but don't stop. So maybe, yeah. right? Yep. Okay. And uh, I think the next last question would be like, uh, what was I ask again? Sorry. <laughs> uh, so, mm, so I think uh, one of the last questions that I want to ask is, uh, if for example, you want to get started uh, with a, a beginning stage, like for example, I'm working for one or two years as a junior um, developer, but I realized that I'm doing the same thing again and again, especially in large corporation manager or wherever, right? Which is usually jails, I mean, uh, very large co uh, companies. What happens is, they tend to do the same thing again, again, uh, probably small minor changes, but pieces for the entire one or two years. And they feel like, fed up, oh, I'm going to do this for the rest of my life and start questioning. And then they're going to, oh, I need to do something exciting. Uh, so they probably like resign, uh, and do something else. Totally, totally a different field. So they probably do, uh, like probably like move to a product side or they move to a uh, UI UX designer or probably like they want to, oh, I know what, I'm just fed up with this. I'm just going to start a new business altogether. So what would be your advice if, people who are stuck at one or two years late in the, in the coding field itself, like the coding the same thing or whatever, right? Um, what would you advise for them to keep it going? Or will you suggest that uh, if you feel like you want to do something else, just go ahead. So what would your advice on that part? That's a good question. When you say something else, do you mean something non-coding related or something different within coding? Something different. So. Uh, something different or maybe not coding. So I think there's two two ways to answer. I mean, uh, two ways to put it away. One is people who just got fed up with coding, don't want to do anything with the tech is better at all, and they want to move to a different field altogether. Uh, I think the second one will be like, you know what, coding is probably not my field. Uh, I want to explore UI UX or probably like a product side. Uh, yeah, I think you can probably answer in that way. So two of them. Yeah, I think, so from my personal experience, I would definitely, mm recommend people check out the field of developer relations. I'm working as a developer advocate and I yeah. love it. So I think that's, if you get bored of coding and you want to try a bunch of other stuff, I think that's actually the perfect job because basically developer relations is a mix of marketing, which I'm super interested in public speaking and coding. So I think that you don't necessarily have to work only as a software engineer, if you have coding skills, I think that's one of the good things about learning how to code is it's applicable to so many different things. So there's tons of developer relations jobs right now. Like that field is really taking off. Like that's sort of like a pretty trendy thing that's happening in tech. And so, you know, you could definitely check that out and you know, that, that might, you know, cause I was always, when I was working 
as a coder, I was always interested in, like, in the business aspect. And they would just be like, okay, no, we don't care. <laughs> we don't want to hear your opinion on that. Like, go, you know, build software. And so as a yeah. developer advocate, I get to do more business stuff, which I really like. Also, you know, you could become a, a sales engineer. That's something I've considered in mm. the past where, you know, you, you still are coding, but you're building demos and working with clients and doing sales and stuff like that. So I think that's, I think that's a really good question because I think these are, that doesn't really get talked about a lot. It's sort of just like, oh, you can only yeah. become a software engineer, but you can do so many different things. If you can just learn how to, how to code, you can, you can go in all kinds of different directions. And I think that's fine. I think that if you want to build those other skills, I think you can potentially do even better in your career sometimes, because if you can, if you can be a sales engineer, right, you can sell and you can build. Yeah. That's pretty powerful, right? Or, you know, if you do developer advocacy and you can public speak and you can do marketing and you can code, I think that really sets you up for positions as like a director of a company or, you know, client. I mean, that you would make a great CMO, I think, of a company if you mm. do all those things. So I definitely think that that's what I would recommend. Yep, yep. I think that's a very good uh, advice from you, actually. I think many, many of people, especially in Malaysia, are not aware of this kind of like sales engineers and uh, developer relationship, especially, right? They're not aware like these are roles available and they can really, they can explore and it's not the end of the world and stuff, right? So I think it's, uh, I think you explained it pretty much very well <laughs> on that part. And uh, I, I think, yeah, I think with the addition of your coding skills, they actually can be helpful when you like start to do all this and uh, you can influence people and you actually make an impact in that, uh, in that, that manner, right? So, yeah. Okay, I think we pretty much come to the end actually. So I think that's about it. Uh, so do you have anything else to say, uh, Corey, or us? No, just you know, I'm <laughs> to. I've been really excited to, uh, to do this, and I'm yeah. really excited actually. This I don't know if you heard, but I'm speaking at PyCon Malaysia, so that's free. Yeah. So make sure you all uh, come to my talk. Yeah. <laughs> I'm talking about building a brand as a programmer. So mm. maybe you all will find that helpful as well. So I'm giving tips on just you know more career advice and stuff like that. And so that's on Friday. I, I don't know what what time in Malaysia, but look into that. I think it's so Saturday. Oh, Saturday. Okay, okay. Saturday. Your Saturday yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I, I hope to see some of you there. Yeah. And then, yeah, just feel free to uh, hit me up on Twitter, at Corey Altoff. I'd love to, to connect with all of you. So that would be great. Yep, yep. So, yeah. Uh, if you're not aware, there's a PyCon happening this uh, this Saturday. I think there's some free tickets going as well, if not mistaken. Uh, but check it out. If not, you can pay anyway. So it's a, it's a volunteer. No one getting actually like doing it full time anyway. So just join. They have a pretty much exciting uh, 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 list of the speakers. So go and enjoy it uh, and the speakers. And uh, if you want to reach out to uh, Corey, so you can reach out to directly with him on Twitter as well. So just ping him and he'll be happy to answer or help you guys with anything you guys, any question that you guys probably have. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, we're looking forward. And I think for Junior Dev, uh, we're probably going to have more stuff, trying to plan out stuff. Uh, I think most of stuff will be online anyway, at least until next year uh, for us. So keep you both guys posted. And uh, good night. See you. Awesome. Good night. Thank All you right. so much. Have a yeah. great night. Yeah. Right. Thanks again. Bye.